Hello, I'm going to discuss and demonstrate atmospheric pressure. At a given elevation, the atmospheric pressure is due to the weight of all the air above that level. At sea level, a one square inch column of air clear to the top of the atmosphere weighs only 14.7 pounds. Or in other words, at sea level, the numerical value of the atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch or approximately 100,000 newton per meter squared. Now to demonstrate atmospheric pressure, I'm going to take this gallon can here and hook it up to a uh, vacuum hose. Connect this vacuum hose to this gallon can and uh, we're going to demonstrate the effect of atmospheric pressure. It doesn't matter whether it's upright or on its side. The atmospheric pressure in all directions will be the same at a given elevation. And turn on the, uh, the vacuum pump and watch what happens. And we see the atmospheric pressure squeezing in on all sides of that uh, gallon can. As the pressure is reduced inside, the atmospheric pressure outside stays about the same, and uh, the outside pressure dominates the inside pressure to squeeze the sides of the can in until the can is all crinkled up in that kind of a configuration. That's probably about as much uh, damage as we can do to that can here today. So let me shut off the uh, pump, disconnect the hose. It takes a uh, small force to pull this out of here because the atmospheric pressure is holding it in. And uh, we release it, let the air back in, but the damage has been done. Now, uh, another uh, example of, of uh, atmospheric pressure and the effect of atmospheric pressure is with these two uh, hemispheres here. If I take, uh, take these two hemispheres called Magdeburg hemispheres after a famous experiment that was done in the 1600s in Magdeburg, Germany uh, with much larger hemispheres and teams of horses. But I'm going to uh, just take these hemispheres and push them together and I have a little bit of uh, grease there to make a nice seal. And then we're going to pump the air out by again hooking this up to the vacuum hose. Pump the air out of between these and give it a few seconds to, uh, uh, to let the vacuum pump evacuate the air in there. And then we'll illustrate uh, the strength of the atmosphere in pushing those two hemispheres together. We can illustrate while that vacuum is uh, building up and we're reducing the pressure there with this little suction cup here. If I push the air out by squeezing it down against the table, atmospheric pressure pushes it down and it's difficult to, to lift it up without pulling it back so that the air can get into it. If we put two of these together, and squeeze them and push the air out between the two, then they're held together by atmospheric pressure. And it takes a considerable force to pull them apart. Similar uh, demonstration of that is with this little bottle here. It has a rubber uh, skirt around it. And when I push this down on the table, squeeze all the air out underneath this rubber mem uh, uh, skirt here, then we can see that there's a significant atmospheric pressure holding it down and it takes a rather large force to pull it off of the table. Of course, we can pull it off very easily just by letting the air back under it. So that, that demonstrates the uh, strength of the atmospheric pressure. Again, uh, pressure is equal to force divided by area where the force is equal to the pressure multiplied by the area. So for a given atmospheric pressure, the more surface area we have, the more force we have. Back to these 
uh, Magdeburg hemispheres now. I think I have a pretty good vacuum there. I'll seal that off, turn off the vacuum pump, pull off the hose. And now we have a, an effective cross-sectional area here of about uh, 10 square inches and a force uh, at our altitude of uh, a little less than uh, sea level. Uh, we're going to measure this on the barometer here shortly, and we'll find that the atmospheric pressure at our altitude here is around 12 and a half pounds per square inch. And so we find that we have a force pushing it this way and a force pushing it this way of about 125 pounds. So it would take about 125 pounds of tension to pull these apart, and I'm afraid I'm not strong enough to do that. But a 125-pound person could hang this from the ceiling and pull down, and that would just about be enough to pull those apart. If we let the air back in, then we see that the only uh, force is just a little bit of stickiness from the, from the grease I put on there, and they pop right open. Demonstrating atmospheric pressure. Now, next I'd like to discuss how we actually measure the atmospheric pressure. Uh, here's a diagram of an actual uh, mercury column barometer. And uh, this shows a, a, a tube here that's uh, inverted and in a little cup of mercury. So this uh, shaded material here is mercury, uh, mercury up the tube. And uh, up on this top end of the tube, uh, this is a, uh, an evacuated region. And so there's zero pressure up here pushing down. The atmospheric pressure down here pushes down and up. And that's what holds the mercury up in this tube is atmospheric pressure. Now at sea level, there's sufficient atmospheric pressure to push the, the mercury up in the barometer to a height of about 76 centimeters. Uh, that translates to about 29.92 inches. So at sea level, on a standard day, the uh, height of a mercury column barometer would be approximately 30 inches, or approximately 76 uh, centimeters. Now let's go to an actual barometer. Here we have an actual barometer here. Here's the little cup uh, mechanism down at the bottom. There's the top of the level, which would correspond to this level right here. And so this is open to the atmosphere. The atmosphere pushes down and pushes this mercury up the tube uh, when it's evacuated up here. So up at the top of the tube, from here down to here, we have essentially a perfect vacuum as far as pressure is concerned. And then this mercury from here on down and uh, back up to this level right here. So this, uh, this is an actual barometer. This is a diagram. Now when we measure the height of this mercury column here in Ogden, Utah, where we're at an altitude in this room of somewhere around 4,700 feet, we find uh, that it doesn't go to 30 inches, but rather it goes to a height of about uh, 25 and a half inches, uh, where at sea level, the height of a barometer would be at uh, 30 inches, or 29.92 inches. And I've got this uh, calibrated right up here. I've got this marker set at 29.92 inches, or 76 centimeters. At sea level, the mercury would be clear up to here uh, in Ogden, Utah right now, Weber State University. The actual height is right there. And of course, the reason for that discrepancy is that we don't have as much air above us here as there is above the surface of the earth at sea level. So therefore, the uh, pressure of the atmosphere is less here than it is at sea level as reflected by the reading on the mercury column barometer. Now another illustration of uh, pressure effects is to consider what would happen if we, if we consider ourselves at sea level at the top of the ocean where the pressure is one atmosphere and we go to a depth of about 33 feet below the surface. Well it turns out if we go 33 feet below the surface there's sufficient additional pressure from the water to increase the pressure to two atmospheres. In other words, there's a one, one pressure increase from the surface of water to a depth of 33 feet. What do you suppose would happen if we took a styrofoam cup like this and took it to a depth of about uh, 
2,200 feet. Well, we could imagine that the pressure down there, if we do the calculations, the pressure is going to be about 70 atmospheres, 70 times atmospheric pressure at that depth. We've got all the air above, which doesn't weigh very much compared to the water. So most of the pressure is due to water depth. But at that depth, this would be squeezed in all directions because at a given depth, the pressure is the same in all directions. And let me show you what a similar can turned out to be when exposed to that pressure. Here's a can that was tied in a bag outside a submarine and taken to a depth of uh, 2,270 feet on a certain date here uh, a few years back. And uh, this is what happens to a styrofoam cam, can, a styrofoam cup when exposed to, an ap to a pressure of about 70 times atmospheric pressure. 